Okay, let's talk about shopping. That's what most of you like to do. Uh, I know my wife and my mother and my aunt love to shop. But there's a safe way to do that. And the safe way to do that is to use the buddy system. Uh, my wife ve even very seldom goes shopping by herself. I don't recommend it. Uh, here again, it's tis the season. And it's always a whole lot safer if you go in numbers. Now, if you use the buddy system and there's two of you, that's fine. But since all of you are good friends up here at St. Clair and you know each other, nothing wrong with going three, four, five, six people at a time. Here again, there's strength in numbers. Most of the time, nobody's going to do anything to you if they see that you're going to be together. Uh, plus, not only that, but you're going to be witness for each, for each other in case something does happen. <clears throat> Make sure you don't overload yourself with packages and that you keep track of where you're parked. That's very important. Um, make a list. Shopping, your shopping experiences will be much more pleasurable. If you kind of get an idea about who you want to shop for, uh, make a list of what presents that you are thinking about. Uh, list by stores. Uh, here again, that way you've got kind of an agenda, you've got a system. Not to say that you may find something else on sale or something else that you forgot about and that you want to pick up. That's fine and dandy too, nothing wrong with that. But this way you can, you can be like Santa. You know, you can make your list and check it twice and then cross it off, okay? It, like I said, it'll make your, make your shopping uh, much more pleasurable for you. <clears throat> Start shopping early. That helps reduce stress. And everybody has got stress during the holidays. Plus, if you shop early, it will help you avoid long lines and it'll help you avoid crowds. The criminal preys on crowds. He or she loves crowds. People bumping into you and elbowing you and fighting over stuff that's on sale and trying to get the late last minute things and they'll bump up or hit up against you or see what they can get out of your purse or out of your pockets or whatever the case may be. So the criminals are definitely going to be out there and you have to understand now, criminals are going to be shopping too. Okay, but they're not going to be shopping for the same thing you are. You're going to be going in a retail store. You're going to be shopping for merchandise. Okay, they're going to be shopping for something that belongs to you. They're going to try to get your keys. They're going to try to get your credit cards. They're going to try, try to steal your identity. They're going to steal checks. They're going to steal cash. Whatever they can, the criminals are going to be shopping too. So you've got to be aware of that. You've got to be aware of your surroundings. <clears throat> I suggest that when you go shopping that you only take one debit or one credit card. Don't take 10 or 15 cards with you. The reason why, you've got whatever you take with you, you've got to be willing to lose. In other words, you've got to be willing to have that stolen from you. So I suggest only taking one credit card. The same thing when you take your checks. If you're going to go to three different stores, take three or four different checks, take the checks out of your checkbook. Do not take your whole checkbook with you when you are shopping. Again, if it's lost or stolen, then you know exactly what numbers the checks are. Write those down at home. These are the blank checks that I'm taking with you, uh, with me. Do not write your name on the checks. Don't, don't sign them blank. But know what check numbers that you have taken with you shopping. But do not ever take your whole checkbook, particularly, again, during the Christmas and the holiday seasons. Only take a minimal amount of cash with you. Also, don't put all your cash in the same place. Okay, if you've got a couple of pockets, stick half here and half here. If you've got a shirt pocket, if you've got coat pockets, don't put all of your cash in one place. Also, don't flash your cash. You've got a big old wad of money roll and you get out to J.C. Penney's or Kohl's or Target and you get out there and you pull this big wad of cash out. Let's just say that you've got your retirement check or Social Security and you start counting that off and you roll that back up and put a big rubber band around it and stick it back in the, in the pocket. Again, the criminal's out and they're going to be watching you because you've got to leave the store at some point in time. So don't keep, so to speak, all of your eggs in one basket. Spread it around. Keep your cash in different pockets. Don't keep all of your cash in one place. Very dangerous. Again, remember these criminals are going to be watching you. They are looking for targets. They're looking for soft targets. 
somebody that's not expecting them. <clears throat> okay, now children, one of the things that you need to do is if you're taking your children with you, nieces, nephews, your grandchildren, teach them one thing. If they get lost in the store, do not have them come and look for you. Okay, that's the worst thing in the world because an abductor could take them away and you're going to never know who got them. What you need to do is to teach your children that should they become separated from you, go to the nearest sales clerk. Go to the nearest place to where they're going to check out merchandise. Now, why would you do that? Why would you teach your child to do that? Got any ideas? That's one reason. They've got security cameras typically around the cash registers and the places that you check out. But what the clerks can do is typically they are not by themselves. So they have, here again, witnesses, other people to help protect the children. But even more than that, they can page you in the store. They can use the public address system in the store and page you. Also, make sure that your children know your name. If they cannot pronounce it or they're too, too young, make them a little ID card or have something uh, physically with the child so that they can identify who they are shopping with. Okay, very important there because again, you're looking at crowds, children have natural curiosities and plus they want to shop themselves. So <clears throat> make sure that you teach and tell the children to go to a store clerk, not to look for you in the store. Now, we all have smartphones now, <clears throat> and we all do a lot of internet shopping. So make sure that you use a credit card that is what I call internet protected. Check with your credit card or your debit card, the, the bank people, and say, I want to make sure that I'm fraud protected. And make sure that when you go to these internet sites that, again, they are protected. It's the original site. Okay, it's you go to it. It's not that they've sent you a site. It's not that they've sent you a special. You know what site, and so you go to that home official site and make sure that they have secure checkout when you're giving them your credit or debit card. Also make sure that you print off a copy of that order and that you keep it with you so that you can check when that merchandise comes in. Is this what I've ordered? Is that the price I'm going to pay? Now you got to get there. So let's talk a little bit about parking. Let, let's talk about <clears throat> going to the retail store. First thing that you want to do is kind of drive through the parking lot, okay? Circle up and down through the parking lot. And no, I'm not telling you to look for the closest place to the door. But what I'm trying to get you to do is to kind of be observant of your surroundings. Check and see if there's anybody just standing out in the parking lot. Are they just standing there? Are they just waiting on easy prey? Uh, is there somebody that's crouched down between the cars? Uh, because you certainly don't want anybody to grab your feet, pull you down, whatever the case. So drive through that parking lot. You know, uh, look for any kind of suspicious people, look for any kind of suspicious parking uh, before you actually park your car. Now you go inside, you do your business, and then you've, uh, you've gotten your packages you've done your shopping, you've got your Christmas presents, and so you're coming back out to the car. Again, stop at the exit door, look around, you know, look out in the parking lot, anybody standing out there, anybody standing close to your car, you know, are they waiting on you to come back? <clears throat> also, if you've got your packages in one hand, make sure you've got your door keys or at least your remote release in the other hand. I always like to use a shopping cart. I think a shopping cart makes you a little bit safer, puts a little bit of space between you and the criminal. So what if they get your packages? That can be replaced. That's not a big deal, okay? You just don't want them to get you or take, take you, and most of the time that's not what they want. They want your money. They want property. Okay, again, when you come out and you've got your keys in your car, and particularly if you've got a car that's got a remote control lock, most of the time, if you push the button once, it will open only the driver's door. That's what you want to do. You don't want to push it twice and open all the other doors. Why would you not want to unlock every door to your car? Because of the other door. I'm sorry? Because the criminal can't get in the other door. 
Exactly. So the criminals can't get in the other side of the car while you're getting in. All right. So you only want to push that button once, and you want to only unlock the driver's door that you're getting in. <clears throat> Do not use that unlock remote and unlock all of the doors. Also, when you are taking your packages back, do not put your Christmas packages inside of the car, the, the, the compartment to where the passenger compartment. You want to make sure and put your packages in the trunk. <clears throat> Why do you do that? Visibility. Exactly, visibility. You don't want to advertise to the criminal and say, okay, uh, I've been Christmas shopping, now I'm going to go to another store, everything's in the back seat so you can break in the car and steal all of my packages that I've stolen. So you want to make sure and put your packages in the trunk. Okay, some vehicles obviously nowadays don't have a trunk. If you drive an SUV, a crossover, a van, whatever. What you want to do is bring you a blanket from home and at least cover your packages to where they can't be seen. Most of the time, a criminal will not take the time to break into a vehicle if he or she does not know what they're stealing. They want to make sure and see something, they want to make sure that, they are, uh, that the risk is worth breaking into the car. And remember, always do that as soon as you come out of the store before you get in your vehicle and go to another store. You want to make sure and keep all of those packages covered up. <clears throat> now, shopping. Don't lose sight of what Christmas spirit is, okay? You want to get into the hustle and bustle and you want to enjoy it, but don't get into the um, scenario to where you're more concerned about what you're buying and how much you're spending for somebody, okay? You want to be real careful about that. What you want to do is uh, enjoy, enjoy Christmas. Remember what the Christmas spirit is. What you want to do is to uh, enjoy friends and family. You know, sure, people like to get a little bit of a gift, but you know what? More importantly, they would much rather you spend that quality time with friends and family than to receive a gift. So think about that when you're shopping, okay? Definitely think about that. <clears throat> now let's talk about safety in home and about decorating. I uh, want to try to get, give you a, a few tips that will help make your home a little bit safer, uh, e even, even a little bit of... Uh, of electrical and fire safety here. <clears throat> don't overload the electric sockets by any means. Uh, don't use an indoor extension cord outside. If you put Christmas lights outside, make sure that the uh, extension cord you're using is waterproof. Make sure that it's rated for outside, that it's not an indoor electric cord. Okay. When you look at buying or putting up Christmas lights, Make sure that they're UL listed. Anybody know what UL stands for? It stands for Underwriters Laboratories. Okay, that means that that cord, those Christmas lights are safe and they've been inspected and they are good to go. Also, don't ever link more than three strands of Christmas lights together. Make sure you don't use too many. You want to keep that voltage down. You want to keep that amps down. So don't link more than three strands of Christmas lights together. <clears throat> now when you go to bed at night, turn your Christmas lights off. Don't leave them on outside or inside. Again, you never know when something could possibly short out or when it could get a little bit hot. So you never want to leave your Christmas lights on when you are sleeping. Okay, And that also goes for when you're not home. Okay, don't, use your, don't leave your Christmas lights on, particularly the indoor ones. Don't leave them on inside when you're not home. What about when you're putting the tree up? Where would be a good place not to put your Christmas tree up? Near heat. Not near any heat, whether it's a real tree or an artificial tree. So you want to make sure and not put it near a wall heater. You don't want to put it near a space heater. You don't want to put it near your chimney. <clears throat> you don't want to put it anywhere near a source of heat is. If you have a pet at home, one of the things that you don't want to do is put anything hanging on low limbs. Cats and dogs and little puppies and for they love to experiment, they love to swat things, they love to get ornaments, you know, 
uh, and pull them off the tree, get them off and play. The thing what makes it so dangerous is, is if you do that and they start playing with the tree, they could actually knock over your tree. Again, it could short out, uh, it could cause, it could hurt somebody, it could hurt you, it could definitely hurt your pet. So think about that when you're putting your tree up, not to put anything on the lower limbs. <clears throat> what about tree decorations? Would you stand up in one of these chairs right here? You want to use something very sturdy. Use a really good step stool or a step ladder when you're decorating your tree. Now, same thing about packages. When we go Christmas shopping, we have to put all the packages back in the car to get them home. But when you get your Christmas packages home, don't leave the windows all the way open. You've got a pretty Christmas tree and, you know, and they see all these, they see a hundred packages up underneath that tree. Don't put all those packages up underneath one tree. Maybe not till Christmas morning anyway. What you want to do is spread those packages out through your house to where they can't be seen. Here again, it's called don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Okay, because again, that criminal is going to look. You want to spread those packages out throughout your house to where the criminal cannot look inside the window and see all these packages up underneath one tree. It makes an easy target. That means when he or she could break into your house, that's what they're going to load up. They're going to load up those, all of those Christmas presents that's underneath that one tree. So you want to make sure that you spread those packages around. <clears throat> now what about shopping at nighttime? One of the things that you can help do again, to help keep your home safe when you're not there. Always make sure and turn on the outside lights and the inside lights. And I'm not talking about Christmas lights. What you want to do is to make sure that your home has the appearance that somebody is there. So when you leave, turn the radio on. If you've got a police scanner, turn that on and turn it up. If you've got a television, turn it on. You want some noise inside the house. You want to make sure that your home gives that appearance to the criminal. Well, somebody's inside. I I'm going to go to an easier target, okay, because you've hardened your home as a target by keeping that noise on inside. <clears throat> Keeping with protecting your home. Use a light timer. Uh, there's several different kinds. I brought some that I want to... Uh, that I want to show you. They make all kinds of different, uh, all kinds of different devices for your home and timers. This one is an automatic light timer. You plug it in and then plug the lamp uh, or your device into this and you can program it when you want it to come on and for how long or what you can do. This one here I really like because it actually has uh, a randomizer on it. That means that you can plug a light into it and you never know when that light is going to come off and on. It's very sporadic. Uh, this definitely makes your house look lived in. <clears throat> Have two different uh, kinds of little alarms here. This one is motion activated and it's not hooked up to an alarm system but if you don't have a home alarm system, what you can do is put this up. You can put it up in a corner like it's got a picture up here or anywhere. And it's got a little keypad on it that you can program in your own number. And so when you're not home, what you can do is say, okay, uh, I'm going to protect my home. At least it's a local alarm. It'll scare somebody to death. Or you can have it to, uh, if an intruder comes in at night, you want to put it in the hallway or you want to put it somewhere. Just don't forget that you've got this on uh, or you'll end up scaring yourself. And this one is wireless. Again, uh, inexpensive. It's not hooked up to the police department or an alarm company. But it is a little local alarm that you can use to help protect your house. I'm going to leave all these up here so you can come take a look. This one is a little different. This is the same thing. But you've got to do just a little bit more mechanical work. What it does is it only protects one door or one window. It has got a sensor switch on it so that <clears throat> whatever door you put it on or whatever window, if you raise the window gets raised, the alarm goes off. It's the same thing. It's not motion activated, okay? Uh, it's only uh, if you open that door and it's got a keypad on it. So again, you can program your own code number. Uh, 
several little good devices uh, that you can buy. They're not real expensive. Uh, here again to help protect you, uh, your family, and your pets uh, when you are at home as well as when you are not at home. <clears throat> if you're going to travel this, this holiday season, see if you've got a neighbor or a relative that can park a car in your driveway. Again, you're sending the message to the criminal somebody's home. Let them move the car and let them change the position. Let them change cars because that's what the message is that you're sending. Somebody is here. I'm still at home. I live here. Or I've got company and somebody is visiting me. So make sure that you call friends, call other folks here at St. Clair, call folks that you're friends with uh, where you go to church. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people want to help you and want to help you and your property stay safe. Okay, if you've got an alarm system, whether it's the ones that I've shown you here or whether you've got an alarm system that's on the house, make sure you cut it on. Don't ever leave and not have that alarm system not cut on. It's not doing you any good at all. It's not protecting your property. Alarm systems are relatively inexpensive nowadays. Uh, we have them on different areas and different places at the police department, and I highly endorse them. Uh, again, it will not only protect you when you are home, but it will protect your property when you're not. But if you've got an alarm system, make sure you keep it on. <clears throat> now again, traveling. What about newspapers and mail? If you're gone for 10 days and you've got 10 days worth of newspapers sitting out in the driveway, what kind of message is that sending? Yeah, you're not there. Or something's wrong with you, you're sick inside, or that you're sick at the hospital, you're still not at that house. So you can do one of two things. Again, have a neighbor, friend, or relative get your mail and your newspapers, but every day. You don't want anybody to send, have any messages that you're not at the house. Or you can call the newspaper office, or you can call the post office, or stop by the post office, and you can have your mail temporarily held and suspended. But whatever you do, make sure that it either gets picked up or that you stop that mail and, that, and those newspapers from delivery. <clears throat> Before you leave, the last thing that you want to do is double check all of your doors. A lot of times we're going to be cooking and we've got to have that kitchen window open. Uh, we're going to be cleaning and we're going to have some strong stringent aromas uh, in the house and we've got to raise that bathroom window or raise a, raise a window in the bedroom. Make sure that all of your windows are closed. Make sure they're all locked. Make sure that all of your doors are locked. Double check that. That's the last thing that you want to do, particularly before leaving and, and going on vacation uh, or being gone from your house for a number of days. <clears throat> now what about routes? What about travel? What about uh, driving in your car? You definitely want to plan your route. Let people know where you are going, okay, and then let them know the route you're taking. Now, what is even more important than that? What do you need to let relatives or some friends know when you're traveling, if you're going to be driving, other than, other than the route? Most definitely stay, stay in touch, but what information should you give prior to your trip? When you're going to come back is very important. Also, what's very important is what vehicle that you're going to be in. They need, you need to write down, give to your neighbors, again, relatives, let the people know that you're coming to visit, what you're going to be driving. You know, I'm going to be driving a blue Chevrolet Impala, it's a four-door, and the license plate is Tennessee license number blank. Okay, and you need to let the people know that in case something happens to you, your vehicle, or whatever, in your route. That's why it's always good to have a specific route and a plan. Have a travel plan. But make sure that you leave that information with somebody, what you're driving, when you intend to get there, and what your route is. Again, prepare for the worst, and then hope for the best. Enjoy the Christmas holidays. <clears throat> when in doubt, take the safe route. When in doubt, take the safe route. It's a little rhyme that you can kind of remember. Okay. 
when you are traveling, make sure you keep all the windows up. Make sure you keep the doors locked. <clears throat> when stopping behind somebody, always leave enough room that in an emergency that you can either go to the left or to the right. Don't pull right up on somebody's bumper. Okay? You want to make sure and be able to get out of a serious situation. If somebody's trying to get in the car, somebody's trying to carjack you, somebody's trying to break in the car, if you pull up close behind somebody, you can't maneuver left or right to be able to even change lanes. So make sure that you stay stopped back far enough so that you can get out of that serious situation if you have to. Most of the time that's not going to happen. But again, good preparation, good crime prevention. If you feel like you're intentionally hit from the back, somebody's trying to get you out of the car, make sure that you stay in the car. Make sure that you dial 911 right there on the cell phone. Don't get out of the car. Wait till help, wait till law enforcement gets there. The fire department will be on the way. We have a great first responders program here. Ambulance service will be on the way. Do not get out of your car. Wait until somebody gets there to help you. Uh, again, for the TV audience, they talked about if you've got a remote control and you're pushing that panic button, if you've got the keys in the switch and the switch is turned on, most of the time that panic button is not going to work. That panic button uh, that's going to flash the lights on the car and that's going to blow the horn is when you're outside of the vehicle. That's when you're either leaving the vehicle or that you're coming towards the vehicle. Uh, that's when the panic button is to be used. I will say this on getting bumped. Uh, if you think somebody's trying to run you off the road, if you think somebody has, has come up from behind, if you've got that cell phone, dial 911 and stay on the phone. Tell the dispatcher exactly where you are, what's going on. Uh, you know, I need help quick. Can you please come help me? I'm driving uh, this direction. I'm driving this speed. I'm on this road. Uh, stay on the phone. That's very important. Do not hang up from the dispatcher. Stay on the phone. Those dispatchers are your lifeline. They're our lifeline. So you want to make sure and stay on the phone with the dispatchers until help arrives. Don't hang up. Okay, please don't hang up. Stay on the phone with them. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about Christmas criminals. Some of them are door-to-door -door solicitors. So you kind of have to be careful about that because People are looking for money this time of year. Uh, a lot of us wait till the end of the year and we make tax donations. We want to help people out. Um, and you'll have people that come to the door that you don't know. And they'll say, okay, I'm with XYZ Charitable Organization. Uh, can you give me any money today? Can you give me a check? If you don't know who these folks are, say, okay, send me something in the mail. Let me look at it. I don't know you. I don't know the organization. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, that's just the way that it is. Uh, if you don't know who these people are, if you haven't called them, if you haven't asked them to come to your door, I would be very careful. Uh, it could definitely be for a scam. I always ask for personal identification and, and company credentials, and I don't mean like a phony or a fake business card. Um, ask them to have the company contact you, uh, send you something in the mail. Uh, sometimes people will pose as delivery people that want to come in your house. You have to remember somebody from FedEx, UPS, post office, they're never going to come into your house. That's against their policy. They're not going to ask you to come in the house. Most of the time what they're going to do is knock on the door and leave the package. Sometimes you have to sign for it, but they're never going to ask to come into your house. So when you've got somebody that wants to come inside your house and say, can I borrow the phone? I need to call the police. Can I use your bathroom? I'm sorry, I'm not in that business. You need to tell them they need to go somewhere else. If you need the police, I'll dial 911 for you. As a matter of fact, what I recommend is when you go to the door and you answer that door, you have that cordless telephone or that cell phone in your hand. You have it right ready to dial 911 because you never know what circumstances may be lurking on the other side of that door. But do not ever let anybody, do not ever let anybody that you do not know inside. Okay, remember about con games and scam artists? Remember, if it too, seems too good to be true, then what? It is. It, is. it probably is. Got to watch nowadays about home repair scams uh, because, again, 
People are short of money. It's Christmas time. They know you've got money at home to spend for Christmas presents. They know that you've got money at home to go Christmas shopping. So there's a lot of things that are going on right now. Uh, you've got people that are trying to come in and say, hey, we've got some leftover shingles. Uh, you know, you've got some repairs done. We need, to, we need to do some shingle repair on your house. Driveway coating, driveway repair. Uh, well, we were in the neighborhood and we stopped we, driving up and down and then we thought about, well, uh, looks like your driveway needs to be cleaned or your driveway needs to be coated. If you did not call those people, if you do not know who they are, do not use them. Also, I always recommend calling three different companies and getting three different estimates. Okay, if they are a legitimate company, they don't mind coming out, they don't mind talking to you, and they don't mind giving you a competitive estimate. <clears throat> So that way you know exactly. Now in closing, what I want to do is give you some ideas about some Christmas presents. These are great Christmas presents not only to get, but to give. Uh, these are things that have something to do with uh, your safety uh, and crime prevention. <clears throat> what about smoke detectors? If you've got smoke detectors in your house, make sure you change the batteries. Always change your batteries on a holiday. Always make sure and change your batteries once a year. Doesn't make any difference whether they need it or not. What about a carbon monoxide detector? Do you have a carbon monoxide detector in your house? Or what about somebody else? Uh, again, give that as a present. Fire extinguishers. And keep a fire extinguisher not only in your house, but in your car. Fire extinguishers make great presents. What about just a simple flashlight? Always keep a flashlight in your purse, at home, and in your car, everybody needs at least three flashlights. Okay, again, in your purse or your pocket, in your car, and in your home. Again, if you've got three good flashlights, then go ahead now, tis the season, and buy new batteries and install them. What about a little simple first aid kit? And again, you can keep a little first aid kit in your car, keep one at home. Cellular telephones are inexpensive now. Everybody needs a phone. If you live on a multiple level house, then you need to make sure and have a fire escape ladder, one of the foldable ones that's on change, so that if you are upstairs, if a fire breaks out downstairs, so that you can get outside of your house always, and so have a foldable fire escape ladder. If you don't have a car alarm, and you've got a car, they're relatively inexpensive now. Again, great presents to give. Most of the retailers that you buy these from offer an additional service to where they will install and put them in for you. Again, house alarm. We've already talked about a good burglar alarm system. What about a handheld alarm? Again, you can go anywhere pretty much in Murfreesboro and they make little personal handheld alarms that make some kind of noise should you need help. The lady back here also said when you're walking to or from your car, most of the remotes have got a panic button. Push that and hold it down. It'll flash the lights on the car. It'll blow the horns on the car. Make sure you've got a good deadbolt lock. Not just one keyway, but that you've got a good deadbolt lock. And the last thing that I really recommend, and it's a good thing to have and inexpensive, it will definitely help with identity theft, is a good paper shredder. Uh, they're put on sale. You can get them anywhere at all. Uh, any documents, any junk mail, anything that you get with your name on it, run through that shredder. Don't just tear it up or, for goodness sakes, don't throw it away. 